Well, it, as long as we're all silent, <laughs> I will offer the invocation before the meeting starts. So please, if you, if you want to join me, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet as a community and to discuss important matters. We pray that you will give us patience with each other, that you will give us respect for each other, and that you will guide our words in our speech and in our actions. We pray that the council would be guided by you and that the decisions that are made here tonight will be beneficial to the community and bring glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Feel free to resume your talking. We won't um, bring the meeting to order until 7. Since it's now 7 p.m., I'll call the meeting to order and ask that you would join me in the Pledge to Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shirley, would you take roll call, please? Here. Here. Mindy Galloway? Here. Mary Lambert? Here. Bob Porter? Here. Steve Wallace? Here. Mayor Hammond? Here. I'm now looking for approval of our agenda. I move that the agenda be adopted as printed. Second. We have a motion from Chad, seconded by Steve. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Now looking for reading and approval of the minutes of our previous meeting. I move that we suspend the rules, waive the reading, and approve the minutes from the July 20th, 2023 regular meeting. Second. Could I ask if you guys could speak up? I'm a hurry, yeah. Sure. If you don't mind. We'll Thank try. You. Let us know. Well, do you I want me to read that do. again? Huh? Do you want me to read that again? It's just uh, approving the minutes from last week. It, it's fine. Just okay. if I'll, you could speak, speak up, up just uh, sure. so I could hear. We have a motion on the table, read by Mike and seconded by Bob. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Do we have any pre-approved reports tonight? I don't remember getting contact by anybody for one of those, so I think we'll move on to public comment. And before we kick off public comment, Larry Lambert, uh, Councilman, Mayor Pro Tem, and Chairman of the Ordinance Committee is going to give us a little bit of an outline. I'll try to speak up so that everybody can hear me. Uh, I'd just like to clarify a few points concerning the proposed animal ordinance amendment, which I believe is the reason most of you are here this evening. Uh, this proposal is part of a broader activity that our ordinance committee has been undertaking for the last couple of years, trying to update and clarify a number of the city's ordinances. The specific zone ordinance in question uh, is not a new ordinance. It's been in place for a number of years, dating back to at the latest the zoning ordinance 2016 and actually was the numbers were on the books uh, prior to that. Uh, as with our other efforts, the proposed uh, amendment is intended to clarify and update while keeping the basic content intact. The numbers of pets allowed remains unchanged in our proposed amendment, uh, which is the same number, by the way, that's allowed by the Shiawassee County Zoning Ordinance at this point in time. So, we haven't tried to make any numerical changes to the uh, proposed amendment, but uh, it does have some new wording uh, as it was proposed from the existing ordinance. Uh, the attention this proposal has received has led to some misinformation and inferences that were never intended by the ordinance committee. We were honestly trying to improve the understanding of the ordinance not to try to penalize any of the residents or any of the animals within the uh, within the city so uh, just wanted to try to level things up a little bit for everyone here to understand that it's not brand new it's not something we've targeted just pets 
it's a sweeping activity across many ordinances that we've been trying to undertake and bring up to date. Thank you, Larry. Um, I will just give a brief overview of the Perry City Council meeting guidelines during public comment. And this um, is, is on the table at the back, too, if you want a copy of it. Public comment will be welcome during the agenda item, item, which we are coming to right now. Please raise your hand to be invited to the podium and please come to the podium to speak. You will be on camera. We would like to hear your name, but you don't have to give it. We would like to know whether you're a city <coughs> resident, but you don't have to say. Please limit your time to allow other members of the public to speak. Each person will have five minutes to discuss their topic, and I will be timing that. If more time is needed, you can request being added to the agenda at the next meeting, or you can come back up at the end of the meeting when we have public comment again. The council will engage in discussion if it's appropriate, but for time's sake, I think tonight, We'll just hear what you folks have to say. Please be respectful. Please provide supporting evidence if you have specific concerns. If you recognize a problem, please suggest a solution. And the mayor will have final authority in the amount of time given to any one topic, although I think we all know we're pretty much here in regard to the pet amendment proposed ordinance. So, we will begin. Who would like to go first? Yes, ma'am, if you would come to the podium, and if you would like to give me your name. Hi, uh, so my name is Megan Beavers. I first want to, uh, so I appreciate Larry setting the tone for it. There is a lot of added language about fostering, which is the part I'm most concerned about with restricting the ability to apply for the permit once a year. The permit is good for the 90 days to foster, and you can only foster up to two cats at that time, which only allows residents within Perry to foster one time a year up to two cats for those 90 days. That is a change in the ordinance that was not in the previous uh, ordinance. Um, so I'm less concerned with the pet limit and more concerned with the impact that that has to the animal rescue community. Already, um, we're getting messages in the animal rescue community from citizens in Perry who have found stray animals and are now scared to post them because they're scared of the repercussions of not being able to follow the permit, not being able to do all of that. Uh, it makes people less likely to dive into the animal rescue community and to step in when there are strays outside. Um, so that's already happening. Um, and I have a lot of concerns surrounding the ordinance because it does not seem to be written in cooperation with animal rescue experts. Some of the things you are mandating are not in the best interest of the animals they will impact. Uh, namely, expecting kittens to be separated and adopted out by eight weeks old. That is not recommended by any vet I've ever met in my life. Um, this will cause behavioral problems in kittens because it will cause them to be prematurely weaned from their mom. Uh, some kittens continue nursing well into 12 weeks old. Adopting them out at eight weeks also leaves them very prone to single kitten syndrome, which makes them more aggressive to their owners because they don't have their playmates to play with. And so cutting them off and expecting them to be adopted out by eight weeks is not reasonable. Um, they also cannot be spayed and neutered at eight weeks old, and so that then leads to the adopting out of unfixed animals, which then causes consequent litters being born in a system that already has too many cats for the number of homes we have available. And then I have concerns surrounding animals only being able to remain in their foster residence for 90 days, as it's very counterintuitive to the point of fostering. Fostering, we keep the animal until they are adopted. And so expecting them to stay with us for 90 days and then move on to somewhere else is not why most people foster. We want to see it through. Um, dogs in particular can take up to 90 days just to decompress all the way and like show you who their personalities are, which makes them better fit for adoption. Um, I'm really concerned on why you're restricting fostering cats in some areas altogether. That is brand new, not being able to some districts who are not able to foster at all. Um, I don't know the reasoning behind why that is being proposed. Um, it's very counterintuitive. Cats are notoriously very easy to foster. They're not a nuisance to the neighborhood if they're fostering. Most of the time if your neighbors are fostering, you have no idea they're fostering a cat. Um, so I, I don't see how that's in the best interest of the public. Uh, animal rescue work is very challenging. We have so few resources already, and this ordinance is going to continue to take away resources that we are already begging for. Um, so I would like to understand where the ordinance is coming from, what is trying to be accomplished by preventing fostering and animal rescue in the area, um, and then I would love a chance to sit down with you guys sometime and try to figure out how we can accomplish what you're trying to accomplish by restricting fostering without it negatively impacting the rescue community. Would you want to give me your contact information so yeah. we can do that? 
And then there's just a lot of like sort of whispering going on that what you're trying to address is the community cat population. And I spoke here last and so did Holly about that TNR is the only way to do that. If you're concerned about stray and feral cats outside, TNR is the only solution for them. Mass, mass euthanasia, mass relocation is, is cruel in some aspects, but also bottom line to what you're trying to accomplish isn't effective. In it, the information that you brought when you gave us mm -hmm. the T and TNR, T and mm -hmm. all those letters, we do have that in okay. the lobby. We give that out to people. All yeah, time. so that's really the best thing for animals. Um, it's If you try to mass euthanize or mass relocate, the population of the cats actually grows and becomes significantly less healthy. I don't think that was ever the intent of anybody. Okay. So that's, that's really what I had to say, just that I'm available to sit down and try to address the concerns that you're trying to, to get at with, foster, with restricting fostering. Thank you. Well said. Who wants to go next? Yes, from the back. Hi, my name is Crystal Patrick. I am a member of the community. Um, my question is in regards to the part of the ordinance that states that if you own dogs, that you must have a fenced-in area of your yard that is a certain square footage, 20 square feet, I believe is what it said. Um, and my question is, um, I recently had Spartan fencing out to my house to fence in just half of my backyard, and their fault was $8,000. So with two large dogs, um, a 20 square foot fence is not going to be ad adequate for them. But in order to fence off my yard to be adequate space for them, it's going to be an outrageous cost. And I think that in this community, in these times where people are having a hard time feeding themselves and using the food bank, um, more often it seems, um, and they're still able to feed their pets, asking them to take on um, a cost of upwards of almost ten thousand dollars to fence in properly fence in not cheaply fence in their yards when um, in my area over by the white oak neighborhood we don't have a problem with dogs running about running out the road occasionally we will see a dog but the owner is on their tail to grab them and so I think that it's uh, it's just unreasonable to ask and I also ask who is going to be enforcing and coming in to check your yard and your property um, to make sure that you are not in violation of the fence protocol. And that's why I'm coming today to ask. Th those seem to be appropriate questions. I don't think we have the answers for those questions tonight, so okay. we'll take those under consideration as we continue to meet and discuss this Okay, because I think anybody can put up a fence, but for it to be a um, suitable fence that a dog isn't going to jump over, climb over, knock down, or get underneath, it needs to be put up professionally, and those are very expensive. Yeah. I think we will be looking for people who would be willing to um, perhaps serve on a task force concerning this ordinance. Would you be interested in doing that? Possibly, yes. Do you want to give me your contact yeah, information? Yeah, sure. Crystal Patrick? Yeah. All right. It's a lot of editing. <laughs> yeah. Who would like to be next? Short person there, yes. <laughs> Are you standing? <laughs> Come forward. I actually have a friend who his, his nickname for me is Shortcake, so oh. I, I take it. Do you want to give us your name, Shortcake? Uh, my name is Rosa Jones, and I am a property owner here okay. in Perry. And uh, along with Megan, I also have done a lot of fostering and rescue. And um, I, I think there may be some misunderstanding, too, of, of some of the people out here on the council, of some of the animal behavior and, and, and needs. And um, I do own a house down here, down, down the street, and we have actually rescued over 60 cats from that area. And when we first started, there were <coughs> a number of, of cats in the evening that came down the sidewalk and wanted to be fed. And over time, we have cut that number down because of all of the animals and the females. We've had some, if they weren't able to be tamed, uh, had them spayed. And at, at this time, there's only one female in that neighborhood now that has not been spayed. 
over time we've been able to cut that down, and that's our goal. I, you know, to be humane, um, it, it's not just that we're trying to prevent them from being a nuisance to everyone else, but it's the expected life expectancy of an outdoor animal like that is less than five years because of all of you know the um, different parasites and animals and things that you know they're they're subject to, and so we're trying to rescue them from that and. Out of those animals that we have taken from the neighborhood, 38 of them were females that are no longer here having kittens. And that's primarily what we've been doing. We haven't done dogs, but I have, I have through the Humane Society of Capital Area and with Shiawassee, fostered over 152 cats that have been successfully adopted, you know, and none of their animals are ever uh, put up for adoption without being spayed or neutered. Uh, that, over what period of time was that, just out of curiosity? In, in the last five or six years, okay. we've been working at this, you know, to, to get that population down and to try to make a better life for those animals, you know, and I'm very concerned about you saying that that you can be ticketed for feeding, you know, an outdoor animal. There are a couple of them that we have had that, you know, just aren't able to be tamed. I, I don't know where you read that, but it doesn't say that in our ordinance. So. Well, it was in the one that was posted online. Well, that, I'm just clarifying what the ordinance well, that, says. That makes it doesn't. feel better. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, there are a couple that we weren't able to tame. They are spayed, or, you know, the females anyway, and but we're still trying to provide you know, food and, and shelter. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think we would all agree that that's a very admirable service that you it, provide. It costs us thousands of dollars oh, out of our own pocket, you know, to feed an animal and provide them shelter to make sure that they get bed attention if they need it and to be spayed or neutered. None of those things come cheap. No, yeah. But we've done it voluntarily yeah. because of our love of these animals. Sure. Larry, did you have something you wanted to no, say? No, I was just okay. going to comment as well that that was one of those when I commented the uh, a misinformation that is an example of what I was refer referring to with my first comments. There are a number of, I won't say intentionally incorrect, but errant statements that have been made. Well, Mindy, okay. did you have something? I, ju I just was wondering um, if you release all of these kitties into the same neighborhood, We've only had two that we've had to release, and yes, uh, once they're in that neighborhood, they know where to find food, they know where to find shelter. To take them somewhere else would be really cruel. Uh, there are There is a program through Capillary Humane Society that they have a, a barn camp program. So if there are some animals that aren't able to be, you know, tamed enough to be an indoor cat, they, they will take them, and the people who are in that program we have to agree to provide them with food and shelter and any veterinary care but then they can be turned into an outdoor cat you know in that situation but uh, we've only had two that we've had to actually you know have spayed and, and released one of them uh, the hazards of an outdoor animal was killed by a neighborhood dog um, after we had her spayed, but the other one is still there, living there, and she's been there now for, I would say, about five years now, Elsie, you know, and, and still comes for her food and shelter. But well, I appreciate you explaining that, because I'm imagining all these cats that you mentioned that you've rescued, Coming back to the same neighborhood. No, no. That, and that's the neighbor screens. No, and, and, that, and that's a part of our, our goal is to get them, you know, tamed and, and adopted into a loving home. And mm -hmm. it, most of the regulations, if you have had any, you know, uh, working through the Humane Societies, is that they recommend that once you have brought an animal in like a cat, that it remains an indoor animal because once they have been treated for all these different parasites and diseases, you know, when they go outside they can pick up all kinds of intestinal parasites and be subject, I mean, there's coyotes roaming around over here and, and everything else. And so it's not recommended to, you know, turn them 
turn them back outside or have them be an eat in an indoor outdoor animal. Rosa, I appreciate all the wonderful information you've given me, but we're at six minutes, so I'm going to have to I appreciate you stop. Time. And let me just say that I would love to hear your contact information if you're interested in being on a tax force that one is formed. I won't make you say it on camera. I wasn't thinking about that, so I'm sorry. So you get with me after. I would. Or with sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. What, well, we haven't actually decided yet. That'll be part of our discussion tonight. Like um, enforcing zoning? Is that what you're talking about? Or no, information I'm not. About your doing it would be a task force that would be formed if it's decided by council tonight not to pass this ordinance. What because is we the have task to have an ordinance so of some that? type. Excuse me, I'm talking. Okay. I'll get your well, question in a minute. I'll get your question what is the task force? in a minute. I'm trying to answer that. Okay. Jeez. All right, fine. The council Go will ahead, discuss that leader. tonight if they decide, if IF, they decide not to pass this amended ordinance the way it was read at its first reading, there would be a task force created to create a better ordinance. So if people are interested in giving of their time to bring information to that, that's who I'd like to hear from. In particular, people who have had experience or are part of a group that does this type of work. That's what it is. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. I mean, there's what? a lot more to answer there. I mean, you're literally saying you're going to make a task force. What's that for? You're literally just beating around the bush and saying, oh, we're going to get people that can take care of them and do this. Well, but then you guys are going to stop and say, we can only have so many animals. And we can only do this and we can only do this. It's got to be to your, what you want. It, it's not okay. How is that okay? A answer me that question. I don't How think is I, it I don't made? Think I can answer How that is it question made? to your satisfaction. How so is it we're going to move on to the next person who wants to come to the podium. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's the way it gets worked. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, I'm Patience Cole. I'm the director of Happy Feet Pet Rescue. I'm also Perry resident, so I don't, many of you probably don't know I've been operating a pet rescue in your city for a couple years now. Um, at current time, we have 186 animals in our care, many of which are cats. Um, not all in the same foster home, of course. We do have a, a Department of Agriculture certified shelter as well. Um, and we currently have 174 foster homes. Of those, 26 of them fall within the city of Perry. I will admit I have not looked at the zoning map closely enough to know if they fall in the particular impacted zones, but they have a Perry address. That was as close as I could get in the time I had. So I do have a couple of concerns, particularly about the fostering. Um, that's, that's a piece that I feel is too restrictive in this ordinance. <coughs> Somebody fostering a cat, like somebody mentioned earlier, you probably wouldn't even know that they were doing that. Um, they're not outdoors. Any of our foster homes are required to keep the animal indoors. They're getting up to date on their vaccinations. They're getting spayed and neutered, treated for any parasites. Um, if the person is becoming a public nuisance or allowing the cat outdoors, certainly we would remove that animal from that home. Um, but I also think that's where animal control would be involved as well. Um, that's a big piece of this that I would I would propose that you guys work more closely with animal control um, rather than passing a blanket policy here allow animal control to do their job um, if someone's being disruptive that's where they come in um, one of the solutions I would propose is change your requirement um, for the breeding that's like the one piece I do agree with no breeding right um, but if someone does foster a pregnant cat or a pregnant dog, um, change your requirement for the eight weeks to 12 weeks for dogs, 16 weeks for cats. That's more reasonable. Um, 
And then I did, I did want to ask you, the amendment doesn't actually mention foster dogs. It just says cats right now. Will foster dogs be permitted? We'll see. That, okay, that's still on the table. So uh, that's another piece I would say. I, I wouldn't pass this ordinance. Obviously, it's not my decision to vote, but I wouldn't pass this ordinance as it's currently written without spelling that out. Are foster dogs allowed, yes or no? Um, and then um, I do understand that the, the pet limit is not new, but it sounds like it's potentially being newly enforced. Um, so I did want to encourage you, if that is something on the table, um, I would try can, can to I work out. a quick question? Sure. So nothing additional has been enforced that I'm aware of. And I don't think that's the, I'm trying to speak up for you. I don't think that's the intention of anybody here to actually start enforcing something. Um, the, especially the number of pets that's on the books already. Mm -hmm. That's what the county has. Um, I know I, I wouldn't vote for something where we're going to go around counting pets. And so that's I don't know what enforcement. At. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what enforcement has happened. I haven't heard of anything changing on that end of things. Do you? Have, There's have been exam? a lot of information on the internet, so we'll leave that at what it is. But. Yeah. In the event that, let's say, you hire a new code enforcement officer that's eager to get out there and start enforcing these uh, ordinances, I would really encourage you to have a plan um, and roll this out slowly. Um, people can't rehome their pets overnight, rescues are drowning. Um, so if at some point this does become something where you feel like you have a new code enforcement officer, it's going to start being enforced more regularly, come up with a plan, maybe roll it out slowly over the course of a year or two so that people have time to look at moving, um, to look at safely rehoming their pets and that we don't end up with cats being thrown outside or dogs being you know, left in crates outside of animal control. Because uh, that happens even at our shelter. Um, and then I think that was my last comment. Um, I would love to be a part of your task force. I live in Perry. Um, I'll just give you our email address because okay. that's safer, it's public. Right. It's happyfeetpetrescue at gmail.com. Happy feet pet rescue at gmail.com. Yep, you got it. Okay. Thanks Thank so you much. very much. <laughs> yes, sir. Come right I want some clarification on the, the current ordinance. You say you're not changing the number of pets allowed. Right. And the information I read on the internet said that it's going from four pets per household to two pets. So what is the current limit? No, it's four, four what's pets. currently on the books right now is if you live in a, a single family residential home, it's four pets. Okay. If you live in an apartment, and that coding is RT and RM, basically we're saying we have current ordinances, two pets are allowed basically if you live in an apartment. So that's not changing? That those and are the same one of the main things. Those are the same numbers okay. that are in the current ordinance. And also with the with the rescues, all my animals are, are rescues. I don't participate in the rescue community uh, other than adopting rescues. And um, I know that when ordinance like this pass and they make it illegal for people to do the things that they're doing for the animals, it also becomes a burden on the taxpayer because the people aren't allowed to do their charitable deeds anymore and then people have to come in paid by the city or animal control and and that burden shifts to the taxpayer and also you're not staying and neutering the animals so the ones that don't get captured and relocated or euthanized end up multiplying and you have an unchecked population until animal control can find them I suppose so it's that, that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Come right up. Hi. Hi. I'm Rebecca Potter. I live out on Beardsley Road, South Beardsley. I'm not in town, but this ordinance coming up concerns me. Um, there are already livestock limitations through the county concerning your agricultural that is already there so you don't really need to have an ordinance in place for livestock 
Plus, on um, the list you have for pets, you have a guinea hen listed as a pet. They are more disruptive than a chicken ever thought of being. And they will not stay home. <laughs> they won't. Um, plus, we're already having problems with animals being dropped off. I work on a farm on Britain Road. We've had several strays show up. There has been cases of kittens dropped off out in, on the north part of Beardsley Road, Tyrell Road, that way, since all this talk started about this ordinance limiting animals. And <coughs> they are right about the fostering. Because you cannot let a kitten go at six to eight weeks. It's not good for the kitten. They aren't socialized properly with their litter mates, and they can suffer from single kitten syndrome. They start acting out badly. I am just concerned about the animal limit that's proposed, like the two per animal, what, two per housing unit, whatever, and I was reading a code enforcement is able to come in your house to verify if you have enough room for that animal. That, that's not on our books. That's not okay. in our ordinance. Not our intent. Not, not our intent at all. All right. <coughs> that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> because I know a lot of yeah, people will be up in arms about that. <coughs> and Crystal is correct about fencing. Mm -hmm. Unless you can do it yourself, yeah. it is very, very, very expensive. I checked about having some fence around at my place. I was quoted $25,000 for along the front of my property. I can't afford that. I'm going to do it myself, but there's a, things that just don't set right with this ordinance. Like I said, the agricultural livestock is already on the books. You don't need to lower it or anything, and there's quite a bit of area that is agricultural right now. Do you want to speak to that or let it go? We'll take it as a, a comment. Basically, we do have uh, the city, there are ordinances that are in place, you're correct, at the county level. The city, in most cases, what we've tried to do in the case of agriculture, we're trying to make certain that whatever ordinance we have, in many cases, we'll just copy and use their same ordinance as part of our city requirements for an agricultural district. You're right, we do have some agricultural look zoning within the city, and my objective, I think, for our committee and for the council would be, unless there's a very good reason, we would try to, as best we could, uh, make our uh, agricultural zoning requirements be that of the county as well. Okay. But it like I said, a lot of animals are already being dropped off. That's been the that's been the truth forever. No. Well, this no. is just re no, Sue. So, I lived just, out Sue. on Bruce Road for I know you three do. years. I know where you live. Where I lived. I used to live in the country. We had animals dropped off all the time. There so is not a new phenomenon. I'm not saying it maybe hasn't increased, if that's what you're saying. It has increased okay. since this has started. All right. And it's a concern. All right. Thank you. moved here about a year and a half ago. Uh -huh. um, I'll just, right away, I, I'm, less government is better for most people, it seems, right these days. And this seems like, you've said a couple times that the enforcement's, you know, we don't know how to enforce it, things like that. So my opinion on a lot of that stuff is, if, if the enforcement's nebulous, why are we putting something like that in play to begin with? Well, it's already there. What is already there? It's already the, the, the ordinance. ordinance has. I know, been and it hasn't been. Books. It hasn't been enforced, is what I'm saying. So why do we continue to uh, amend something that isn't enforced? Well, do you want an answer to that question, or you just want to? No, no, sorry, I'll take an answer. 
that if someone had unfortunately been attacked by a neighbor's dog mm -hmm. or by a dog that was loose, mm -hmm. and that person sued the person whose dog it was, and they went to court, the judge would say, what does your community have in its ordinance concerning controlling a dog? Mm -hmm. Nothing? Or is there guidelines that say the dog's to be leashed or fenced or a limit to the number of animals? Well, they, they're, that, they're, we have to have those guidelines, just like we have to have speed limits on the road. I mean, we, just, we have to have those guidelines for purposes other than <coughs> just telling people what to do. That's okay. not the intent. Well, I understand. I, I'm glad you brought up the speed limits because those get broken often. Yeah. And they're very insignificantly enforced only when somebody's being really outside of the realm of the speed limit it appears that it gets enforced somebody gets stopped somebody gets ticketed sure. so that's the enforcement part i understand the lawsuit part but there's two two parts to that lawsuit is one is to the people who actually had the dog who attacked it mm -hmm. that's one side of the lawsuit the other side would be what does the community say? So the judge is going to rule on both instances. He may set aside one because of the city ordinances or the town ordinances, but he's still got the personal injury stuff going sure. on. Sure, yeah, side. and I, I'm just trying to offer Understand. an answer to your question. So it's, <clears throat> as far as enforcement goes, I can understand handling the nuisance instances such as somebody getting attacked versus sure. the general amendment ordinances that we're going in. Regarding this being amending the 2016 ordinance, can it not be voted to eliminate the 2016 ordinance rather than amend it? Because if it's not enforced, or it's enforced very nebulously, can it just not be voted to no longer have that in place? As I, opposed I to certainly amending? think that's something that the council could discuss. Okay. Um, a couple other comments. Uh, Prior to this meeting, the last couple of days when it's coming up, I was informed that somebody close to me has seven cats in their home. I've lived there for a year and a half. I've never known that. So I'm not sure, you know, in, in this instance, that would be one where somebody who's most likely above the number in that residential area, I've never known. There's never been a nuisance with seven animals in that. And most likely, there would never be an issue. Right. So, but that, and that's where I'm going. It's like I just don't know how that would be enforced. Why, why have a rule if the rule isn't enforced? It just seems like I, I don't understand that part. Well, take that under yeah. consideration. Okay. And then uh, the permit money for the, the fostering that they've mentioned, you have to get a permit. Where would that money go? And you don't need to answer that now. That's just a question of wh what that money is used for. Uh, I would like to be a task force volunteer if you have that, Randy Hazel. Yeah. H A Z E L. Um, H A Z E L, correct. And that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who would like to be next? Me. Yeah. Come right up. <laughs> do you want to talk from there or do you want to come up? No, you know what? This is going to be the one that I want to talk. You ready? Go ahead. Were you raising your hand? Yeah. You go ahead. That's why I raised my hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do well speaking in public. But this lady, this gentleman. I'm, I'm afraid that we're not going to okay. all be able to well, hear you. So I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna, I'm going to try not to cry. You can cry. We're okay. I have tissues. But this lady, that gentleman, had a cat and gave her to me. After they fostered her for six months, they got her shots all over and they spayed and neutered her. I couldn't ask for a better cat. Wonderful. But they do wonderful work, and I'm but, sure the other people that do it too. But if I had it been for those two, I wouldn't have my cat. I live in an apartment town like this, and we can only have one cat, yeah. one dog, which is fine. I agree, it's a little apartment. My cat hates outside cats. She accepts the inside dogs. She'll play with them and whatever. But there's outside cats that run wild. Nobody knows who they belong to. 
but she literally attacks me, you know, and I say, no, look, I'm the mom, not, don't get up. But she hates outside cats because nobody's corralling those outside cats because nobody wants to take responsibility. But the people that rescue and take responsibility are great. What? You know, and to limit them or to limit anybody is like saying, your feelings don't mean diddly. You know, so anyhow, but if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have mine. Well, I'm glad that you have yours. Thank you very no, much for your thoughts. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm Lawrence Brown. I go by the name Lars normally. My uh, beautiful wife here owns the Shear Shed in town. Uh, which I'm sure a lot of people know about and some people have a bad uh, perception of our business based on some neighbors in the past. Now, just to clear things up, we did have some issues with the neighbors and we cleared all those up um, with the health department and everything else. Um, and she currently has the number one business in Shiawassee County for grooming. That being said, I think instead of discussing all the negativity, maybe this, this task force you're thinking about should be to help all the people that, that have these pets that can't afford to build fences. I mean, I'll give my time to dig holes and put in fence posts. I'm sure a lot of you guys would. So maybe we need to come to some solutions instead of just beating around the negative part of this. Help people out. Uh, we would gladly donate. Last year, we have a huge following of clients, not just in this city, but across the <coughs> cities. And even last year on Thanksgiving, we had how many people? Like, 20, 30 people chip in and we end up sponsoring 10 families, you know, Thanksgiving meals. So all I'm saying is with our clientele, we definitely would be willing to help in and chip in on some of these, these foundations, these fostering companies to help get rid of the, the problem in the right way. So if anybody needs anything, feel free to call the Shear Shed and we'd be glad to help with anything. That's all I have to say. Thank you. my daughter from Hazlitt schools to send her to Perry because I was so sick of the big city BS as I'll put it but um, she was lucky enough to be in the FFA her freshman year by lucky I mean it's because we it's all we could get three days before school started and enrolling so I guess the question that I have is you know my understanding is the school just spent a lot of money to build a new barn for the FFA and now I'm seeing that you guys are putting in proposals for the FFA, and I, I, I guess I just don't understand why. It seems like they, that program is well run. The students are, from what I understand, I know several of them in the FFA still through my daughter, are very responsible children. Most of them are national honor students. Most of them take a vast amount of pride in what they do with those animals. Um, the that was part of our ordinance committee's reason for amending this ordinance because we didn't have any guidelines for the egg community and we knew the school was building a new barn and there would be things. So Larry contacted the FFA advisor, mm -hmm. met with them. We had FFA students come into our meetings and they met with Larry individually to give him the information about what they would be doing there. So we, we have talked with them, we, we, I say we, the ordinance committee, Larry's the chair, um, they're so very much a part of the that. students. That oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I, just wondered why, with FFA. Yeah. I just wondered why all of a sudden the FFA is suddenly getting put in the mesh of changes. So it was just a, curi a personal curiosity with yeah. the we students. Just, as we talked in the committee, as Sue indicated, we just wanted to make certain because of the activity of the FFA, the fact that we're building a new barn, part of their facility is within the city, part of it is inside of Perry Township. So I met with their advisor, as Sue indicated, and tried to talk a little bit about it. Yes, we did add a few bullets, but they're very general in terms of what you would expect the students that are already doing and all of the uh, advisors are already doing there. So we didn't put any numbers on anything, any lengths of time, because once we understood their 
process uh, because one of our concerns was were we going to put something in that would restrict those students from taking one of the animals and keeping them at their home and right. was decided that with the new barn, the new facilities, that the activity would be focused there and yeah. not at individual homes. Well, I was just curious because my daughter used to waste a joke. She was a chicken tender. So I know how much work they do on a Saturday morning up there at the barns. But um, I want the gentleman over here that I just want to throw this into that I like his idea of abolishing all of it instead of making amendments. But that's again just a personal opinion. So I thank you guys for your time. Well, thank you. So I'm not going to say a lot, I'm not going to repeat the same stuff. My name is Zach Beaver, so I'm Megan, who spoke earlier's husband, but um, I think, you know, uh, some of the specifics of the, of the fostering and the cat part in particular, um, you know, you had mentioned at the very beginning of the meeting, maybe before even the recording started, but, you know, the TNR, like the acronym, you weren't, you know, the, the letters. So it, it, I just want to speak about that for a minute because that's something that I think everyone needs a lot of education, including ourselves, um, about. And so it stands for trap, neuter, return, not rescue necessarily. The goal is always to rescue them if they're able, but it takes time to do that. So that's a minimum of like they were talking about before, but you know, eight weeks is, is no time to train an animal um, of any age. Um, so you you know need more time than that, and the goal is to get them rescued if they're you know tameable or they're they're suitable to be around you know children and, and other pets and whatnot. But that's not guaranteed by any means, especially if they've been living outside. And it sounds like some people here have been caring for the community here in Perry, the, the animal uh, the animal community, uh, because humans failed at some point. It's all of our doing that causes an animal problem. Right. These cats are excellent hunters. They'll survive on their own, but we're the ones dumping them, which we've had some more, you know, some talk of you know dumping cats and whatnot. But the only thing that's scientifically backed to help with this problem is called TNR. And it's something that we volunteer our time, our money, our you know, we spend our whole basically our whole day doing this after our working hours. And um, it's the only thing that actually gets results. So over in Morris, we've already just within one block, um, and just a couple of us have already rescued or TNR'd in general 80 cats. 80 cats is like I can't even imagine a room full of 80 cats, right? You don't <laughs> notice them all at once because they're roaming and whatnot, right? But some of the so TNR is something to look into, especially with. Um, you know, talk of enforcement, well that would, you know, require money. Well, if we're going to talk about money, TNR, and education about TNR, that, I know you had, meant, I, uh, Mayor um, Hammond had mentioned you have resources that we had get provided at the last meeting here for, for the public, which is great, but that is really where money is well spent, not enforcing and, and policing this. Um, it's educating and it's using TNR as a tool to help control this population because it's, it just gets out of control. One dumb cat, you know, they reproduce so fast. And then the only other thing was, um, uh, um, I had just, I had wanted to, so I would also be, you know, my, you can contact my, my wife, um, but I would like to be part of the task force as well. But um, just, you know, you had mentioned um, that, that Larry Lambert had, had talked to the FFA, um, you know, administrators and whatnot, but I think in terms of making the CAT policies, the foster policies, I think you really need to talk to them too. Um, and maybe you guys did, and I, I just wasn't part of it, that's you know, obviously fine, but, um, but there are a lot of specifics in there that are incorrect or they're not what, sh you know, we think would be a good number. So I just wanted to come up and talk about TNR specifically a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else want to come forward? We do have to move on to the rest of our meeting before we get to this agenda item. So no, I wasn't going to. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to beat everything that's been. My name is Alicia Regan. Oh. I live here. Um, I propose that you find low-cost microchip 
and hold people accountable for dumping their animals. It would bring money into the city and for the program. I've spayed and neutered with the help of Laura Miller, 117 cats out of my own pocket in Shasper and Perry. Now, if we would hold people accountable, then you could go after them when they dump their cats or dogs or whatever. But any pet should be a low cost microchip and form of a license because you can't really put a tag on a cat and expect it to stay. So if you would do microchips, then you can scan them and see who they belong to and who to go after for them. I agree with you 100%, except okay. for to do that, we have to have an ordinance. Well, and, and, and you're working on it. And we're working on it. Right, but you, you do have dogs that have to have a license, so make it to where every pet, whether it's a snake or a rat, has oh. to have a microchip. Whatever you're considering a pet, Make it a microchip because you're finding ferrets running loose. And well, take that under consideration. Well, it would bring a ton of money into the city because of these people dumping their animals. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank so you. you. Yes, sir. I'm just going to repeat and underscore what people have said about not putting a limit on fostering. Um, we have a cat that was a little um, screwy uh, an outdoor cat. and uh, we knew it, it wouldn't function well in a shelter and we had to hang on to it for two years finally it got a home you know um, a lot of these cats can't do well in a shelter and that's why I don't think putting a limit on, on fostering is you know particularly wise um, so many of these cats the thing that is so moving about the outdoor cats I would say roughly 70 to 80 percent of them have had owners, have had a home, and have been tossed out. Somebody talked about the kittens just being tossed out. Four Corners up here about three years ago was like a dumping ground. A friend of mine was in a vehicle behind another vehicle, and as soon as they crossed over and they were about to go up the hill heading up 52, somebody just tossed a cat right out the window. You know, um, so I, I guess. Not putting a limit on this, and also not putting a limit on the numbers. As Rosie said, we used to have, at one point, especially in the winter, about three winters ago, I was feeding 11 cats. Uh, and by the way, these people who worry about they're going to be there, they don't. Those cats, as soon as they ate, they run for shelter. You know. Well, the population now is down. I only have seven, six or seven now. You know. So, um, and it's, it's just wonderful to watch some of them thrive. And it's wonderful to watch them have their little uh, fights with one another, you know, not paw, actually, you know, get away from my food. Um, but, um, I know I grew up with dogs, never had a cat. Now I have only cats. I wish I could have a dog, but I think my relation go up. But all of these animals just, they respond so much to attention. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like an orphan, find, you know, finding, finally finding a parent, you know. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping that uh, what's been said tonight will have an effect on, on the committee. So thank you. Thank you. But I just had a question. Yeah. Since there's so much misinformation online about the ordinance, is there a way to clear that up with the whole town on the page again in some way or another? Well. Let's see how the rest of this meeting goes. Again, I don't know for sure what's going to happen when we get to the possible adoption of the zoning amendment. If it's adopted, yeah, we'll absolutely make sure people have that. But if it doesn't, and if we form a task force, it'll be an ongoing process. Okay. So. The proposed ordinance is on the website, the city website, right? Yes. Yeah, so the, the proposed ordinance is on the website, and also on the website is a, uh, the current ordinance that has been, the portions that have been deleted are struck through so you can still see them. The portions that are proposed new in this amendment uh, are highlighted in red. So that's on perry.mi.us. You can see that. Uh, okay. Thank you. As it stands right now. And I think they did post that on Facebook too, if you don't have. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of, I read some of it. I just okay. didn't have time to it go just through all of it. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? If not, we'll move on in our agenda. 
Moving then to communications. Um, Shirley, do you have any communications to share? I have one. Okay, this is a letter from Mindy Galvaby. Um, Mayor Hammond and the members of Perry City Council, I regret to inform you I must resign from my position on the Perry City Council effective immediately. My appreciation and great respect, respect goes to everyone I have served on council with, as well as our fine city staff. Because of your hard work and dedication, our community is a safe and comfortable place to live. Keep up the good work. Here's truly new reality. We'll, we'll discuss and address that later on in the meeting. Um, we'll now move to mayor and department head reports. Um, I do just have one item I'd like to bring to the public, and I'm glad so many of you are here. We need someone to replace a vacancy on the SADA board. Um, our city clerk, Devin Miller, who passed away last month, was serving on that committee. They meet once a month, and that's the Shiawassee Area Transportation Authority. Um, they meet up in Owasso in the evening monthly. And if somebody would be willing to serve on that board and represent the city of Perry, we would greatly appreciate it. Just let me know by email or phone call or tonight, if you would. And now I'll turn it over to our department heads. Megan, would you like to go first? Hello. This is Megan Galbraith. She's the treasurer of the city of Perry. Good evening. I just have a couple quick things for you tonight. Um, our audit will start August, um, the week of August 14th and 15th. The letter I'm handing out to council now is just a, a formal notice from the auditors that they will be conducting the audit coming up in these couple weeks. Same audit firm that we've been using. Um, I expect everything to go smoothly. The other update I have is that recently we've received a few donations to the city's parks. Um, the first one was a memorial donation from the Stiff family, and we installed a park up here at Veterans Memorial. Um, it's near the rock. It's a nice. Um, has a nice plaque on it that names who the donation is in memory of. Um, it's shared on our social media, so I just wanted to give a thank you to the family if you want to pass that around as well so council can see it. Um, if you've been in the park recently, you've seen it. If you've been online recently, you've seen it. The second donation we received is from the Community District Library. They have installed two separate benches, one each at Veterans Memorial Park and Jubilee Park on the other side of the tracks. The benches are solar powered. Um, they are charging stations. And in the coming future, very near future, they will have uh, Wi-Fi. So if you're out and about in the park and your phone is dying, have a seat and charge it back up. Um, that is courtesy of the Ken and Joanne O'Berry Trust donation to the CEO. And I'm sharing here a couple pictures of those mentions too. While I'm up here, I would also add that there's about 10,000 people that follow the Perry's community page and only about 2,500 that follow the City of Perry's Facebook page. So if you want to get information directly from the City itself, I would recommend that you start following the City of Perry. Um, most things that are posted there are also always on the website. Did you want to talk about um, the, the possibility of a bench in memorial? Sure. So last meeting we discussed putting something in honor or memory of Devin at one of our, our park up here. I would propose that we do something similar to the black bench that was donated recently in memory of the Stiff family. It is in a line with the donation memorial program that we established last fall. Um, I like the permanence better of it than maybe a bush that, or a tree that we can't guarantee its lifespan. Um, this we know we're looking at a solid 10 years, minimal maintenance, and I just think it's a, a more concretely. <coughs> Anybody have any questions about that? Bob's going to present what he's found about the tree we asked him to look into here shortly. So yeah, so the purchase of that would probably be just under $2,000, including installation of the concrete pad, um, the bench, and the personalized plan. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. Kevin, are you here? I can't see you. There you are. Kevin is our superintendent of Department of Public Works, for those of you who have not met him. Um, 
Um, I reported at the last meeting about the issues that we had at the water treatment plant uh, with the broken pipe. Um, the repairs are ongoing. Uh, we're working on prices for that stuff. Uh, we're bringing something to you soon. I talked with, with the mayor. We agreed that we should file an insurance claim to see if we can get anywhere with that to help pay the cost for those uh, repairs. Um, the lead service line uh, inventory, we've replaced two galvanized water services in, in the month of July. Uh, we fixed one water service that had low flow. Um, we've been plagued with bad weather lately, down trees all over town, power outages that require DPW attention for um, hooking the generator up for sewer stations, and, uh, and outages with that, making sure our generators are running and functioning properly. Um, just so you are aware, we filed a police report for an illegal entry into the DPW facility. Uh, somebody stole copper out of the building. Um, so we are addressing that with the police department. Um, the DPW assisted with uh, the library board benches and the memorial bench at Veterans Memorial Park. Um, we worked with Cordier's excavating to get the concrete work done and get the benches installed. Um, the CDL asked us to lend a hand in, in getting that process taken care of, so we happily did so. And uh, we assisted with the, the fun night at the park. I think that was a good event. I definitely think we should have it back. A lot of people had a good time, including my kids. So thank you to the Parks Committee for putting that together. Um, it was a good time. And uh, other than that, it's just the usual summer maintenance and, and business as usual. Is there any questions for me? Council, do you have any questions for Kevin? <coughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Kyle, do you have any <laughs> This is our police chief, Kyle Box. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Not have much of a report, but I uh, wanted to let you know that we had another successful national night out uh, last Tuesday. I want to thank Hammonds for handling all those hot dogs, so that was quite the feat. Um, but we had an uh, okay turnout, but we had a really good community contact and interaction, so it was very worthwhile. And I appreciate all the businesses and all the other donations and uh, support that we had that evening. So um, that's all I have report wise. Any questions from you folks? No? I think we're all set. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. I'm going to ask Bob if he will report on what he found out about the tree that we discussed for a moment. Yeah, I'll just wanted to. <laughs> I just have to plug this out. I'm going to butcher the name. Um, it's a combination of tree lilac. It is, I was surprised. I didn't realize it was actually in this lilac family. I just thought someone named it because it looks like that. Uh, syringa reticulata. <laughs> tree lilac, Japanese tree lilac, is that, or silk tree. Um, it does have a white flower, like a lilac, but it's a tree form. It flowers a little later in the season than a, your traditional lilac. Um, they grow about 20, 25 feet max, with a spread of about 15 feet. They're a nice ornamental tree. They, they're fairly disease resistant and pest resistant. So um, they're they're for an ornamental tree they're a nice tree. And you think it would do well here? Do yeah. we have appropriate places? The zoning to here is fine and the sunlight is fine. We'll tolerate some shade if it prefers full sun. So if you want to put a bench put something like that next to a bench, I think that's that'd be fine. Do Council, do you have any discussion regarding those thoughts tonight, or do you want to move on and table that or put it uh, to our next meeting for discussion? It's up to you. I, I have no problem making the decision tonight as long as everybody else does. What would you like to see us do, Chad? I, I think the bench, I think the bench and, you know, possibly the tree, I think the bench would be a great, a great thing to put out for Devin. A bench and a tree? I I would say both, but if we only decide one, that's fine with me. But I, I would say the bench would would be the top on my list. Steve, what do you think? Uh, Bob, did we did you get a 
cost for the tree? They're about 200 bucks. Okay. They're not a real expensive tree, it depends on the size. <laughs> Cottage gardens, or I didn't find one up here yet. I'll, I was a busy, busy week, okay. so I didn't find. One. I was going to call Cricket Farms and some other places around here, so but I hadn't had that chance to do that. I think, I, I, I think uh, both. It's it's really not that a great expense. For the services she that price for the tree. I expected it to be higher than that, but that's I, I, that's a wholesale price now. So that's, I understand. I would suggest we do both for the years that Devin gave to this uh, mm -hmm. community. Mindy? I was just going to say, as much as Devin enjoyed sitting outside on her lunch and her breaks, and I just think our bench is really appropriate. Would you be okay with a bench and a tree? Yep. Fine? Yeah, I'll go with both. Sorry. Agree. Yeah, I think we should do both. And Bob, what do you think? I'm indifferent, but I agree. I think both is a nice touch. Because I, I can go either way. I like the bats the bats, but I also like trees. And I can give you the name of some nurseries that we dealt with if you need something. Would it somebody like to make a motion and give it a price limit, or how do you want to approach that? Let me, before you put a price on that tree, i got to make sure that you know, it's available. Okay. All right. And let, let's, let me research. Let's do a no action taken on that topic and put it on the agenda for our next meeting and um, we'll take care of it then when we have all the prices. Megan, if you could <coughs> make sure we have the prices at that meeting for the bench and the plan. Moving on then to other committee reports. Um, Mike. Mike Connell had, is served on the personnel committee, and we knew with Mindy letting us know that she was needing to resign, she had been the chair of the personnel committee. So at our last personnel committee, I asked Mike if he would be willing to serve as chair. He's agreed to do that. So Mike, would you give us a report on the personnel committee's <laughs> recommendations regarding their last meeting? Sure. The Personnel Committee met at the request of City Council to review filling the position of City Clerk, which was left vacant by the death of Devin Miller on July 2nd, 2023. The committee reviewed the job description for City Clerk and discussed the skill set needed for the job. Deputy Clerk Shirley Smith has been trained in many of the skills needed by Devin as a backup uh, to the clerk for several years. Shirley was appointed to the Deputy Clerk position by City Council in March 2023. She has proven herself capable. The committee will recommend uh, to council that Shirley be appointed to the city clerk position at the salary of $52,500. The committee discussed the need to create a part-time office assistant position, essentially backfilling her, her old position. Um, this would replace her position, flex time office assistant position. The job description was reviewed and wages discussed. This would be a part-time position. Um, the committee would, will recommend creating this position for 20 to 30 hours per week at $17 an hour. The position should be posted for two weeks and interviews held with a hiring date of September 1st, 2023 uh, to be the goal. The current flex time position is filled by an employee who will be leaving August 25th, 2023. I would also like to state how fortunate uh, the city of Perry is to have Shirley as an employee. To share a little, when Devin was sick and unable to be at the office, Shirley, among others, um, stepped up in a big way to keep City Hall running. She took on more hours and responsibilities to accomplish what needed to be done. She did this while stating she didn't want to raise. This is an excellent example of selfless leadership during a time of need for the city that hasn't gone unnoticed but needed to be stated publicly. No one is more deserving of this position, and the personnel committee feels honored to make the recommendation to council. Thank you, Mike. Do we have any reports from any other committees? Any other committees? Okay, we'll move on then to our next agenda item, presentation and approval of the bills. I move that we approve the bills as presented and that payment be authorized. <coughs> Second. We have a motion from Larry, seconded by Chad. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. 
Next on our agenda under old business is to discuss emergency services. Um, I don't think we really have any new information regarding that yet, do we, Kyle? Not so I'm going to suggest, um, in lieu of the time, that we um, move this to the next meeting and no discussion to be held regarding that tonight. Council, are you all fine with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And, and under old business also we have discussion regarding building the general fund. Again, in lieu of time, I would suggest that we move that to our next meeting as well. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. yes. Okay, so under new business, I told Mindy we would discuss that later, and here we are at later. We have received a resignation from Mindy Galloway, <coughs> who has served the city of Perry tirelessly on so many committees over the years. I think she served on the Planning Commission for 20 years. She has served as a city council member a couple different times, being elected and appointed and elected. Um, she served on the personnel committee as chairman. She served on the technology committee. So, so many committees. Mindy, we appreciate all that you've done for the city of Perry. I'm looking for a possible acceptance of Mindy's resignation. I move that we accept with regret the resignation of Council Member Mindy Gulbaby and extend our appreciation for her service. Second. Is it possible, Council, that we can just add that this resignation is effective? effective. At the end of this meeting, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. We have a motion from Larry, seconded by Mike. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes. We now have possible approval of the sanitary sewer rehab proposal. Kevin, would you like to come and talk to us about why this is back on our agenda? I reported on this agenda item before to council and we saw approval to uh, do some sewer lining. Uh, we set aside money to do that a little bit every year. Um, after our previous approval of this agenda item, uh, I sent a really nice email to the company that does the work for us, uh, Liquid Force, and I stated on there our time frame and when we wanted to have that work completed and I never received anything back from them. Apparently it got lost in the shuffle. So now that we've entered a new budget cycle and our previous approval is no longer valid, I bring this to you again. It's the same uh, proposal as last time for the same amount of money in the same section of pipe um, to be relined. It's an area that is troublesome, uh, high maintenance and high cost of maintenance uh, for that section. So I'm asking for approval so that we can continue with our lining project and uh, get this section done so we can look towards another section in the future. I was wondering why the same thing came up. You know, yeah, we, we, missed our, we missed our <coughs> timeline there. Um, these things happen, but uh, it, it set us back one cycle. But uh, overall, I think it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll reach our goals in the end. Any other questions for Kevin regarding this item? I move that we accept the proposal for, by Granite M liner for an amount not to exceed $35,845 for sanitary sewer rehabilitation and recommend <coughs> recommended by DPW Kevin supervisor by Kevin Pyle. second we have a motion from Bob seconded by Chad all those in favor of that motion please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed nay motion passes thank you, thank thank you. <coughs> I believe um, based on the recommendation from the personnel committee that I would like to appoint Shirley Smith as the city clerk for the city of Perry and approve creating the office assistant position as described in personnel committee's report. 
looking to council for any discussion regarding that or for a motion. I move that we approve and accept the following resolution. Resolved that whereas the City of Perry Personnel Committee has recommended to promote Deputy Clerk Shirley Smith to the City Clerk position, whereas it is further recommended that the salary for the City Clerk position be $52,500. And it is further resolved that whereas based upon the recommendation of the City of Perry Personnel Committee, that the pro promotion of Shirley Smith also creates a need for a part-time position of part-time office assistant. It's further recommended that the posting of this position will indicate 20 to 30 hours per week at $17 per hour. Further, do it due to it being part-time, there will be no benefits. Whereas this part-time office assistant position takes the place of the full-time position of receptionist AP clerk previously held by Shirley Smith and also takes the place of a receptionist temporary flexible part-time position created in March of 2023 and filled May 31st, 2023 to August 25th, 2023. Therefore, the City of Perry does promote Deputy City Clerk Shirley Smith to the position of City Clerk at the annual salary of $52,500 and further creates a position for posting of part-time office assistant at the rate of $17 per hour, 20 to 30 hours per week, replacing the prior position of receptionist AP clerk and receptionist temporary flexible part-time position created March 2023. Second. We have a motion from Steve, seconded by Larry. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Congratulations, Shirley. <laughs> if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. And Megan, if you'd run up here with your camera and take her picture. <laughs> kind of turn so she can get your picture. <laughs> <laughs> I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear or, affirm or affirm that I will support, that I will support the, Constitution of the, United States the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state and, the Constitution of this state, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of City Clerk according to the best of my ability. Thank you. You're now that I've been shuffling through my papers, I'm lost for a second. Give me just give me just a minute. Okay. We are now ready to move on to possible adoption of the zoning amendment 383. Section 3.30, Animals in Residential and Agricultural Districts. Discussion. I, I would say that with the, in lieu of the support or non-support of this ordinance, we need to table this. And also, I just want to point out one thing, Larry. Yes, this Shiawassee has four dogs. They do not enforce cats, only dogs. And the city has never enforced cats, only dogs. Because before I moved here, we called we don't worry about cats. So that's new. So it's it may be a nuance, but it is still new. Okay. And that's why it was called an amendment. Correct, but it's it's in my opinion, that's unacceptable. Also, we have an awful lot of people here. Most of them were residents that I wrote down. Part of them are. <laughs> okay. You want me really? I just said most. No. Yep. I can count. I wrote, let me see, I had one, two, three, four, <clears throat> five, six people that, that were residents out of the eight or nine people who spoke. So most of them were residents. Okay. I wasn't okay. incorrect. Goodness. Can I just yeah. add to what you're saying? That sure. Council and I have received emails, and I would say 
at least 25 emails from people who probably are not here tonight, maybe some of you are, but expressing the same concerns that those who did come to the podium and expressed tonight. So I think we are of the same mind. Yeah. I'd like to uh, interject and That's fine. make a I couple comments. That's my opinion. And understand. Uh, after hearing all the comments tonight, comments on social media, articles in the local news, which have happened, and the emails that uh, Sue just mentioned, I believe we'd be remiss in our responsibility to the residents of the City of Perry if we move forward on approval of Amendment 383 at this time. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm going to make a motion, and I'll try to, it's in parts. I move to postpone the possible adoption of Zoning Ordinance Amendment 383, Section 3.30, Animals and Residential and Agricultural Districts for 120 days. Secondly, we would issue a moratorium on enforcement of Section 3.30 of the current Zoning Ordinance as it pertains to dogs and cats for 120 days. The balance of Section 3.30 would remain in effect and commission a six-member cross-discipline task force to objectively research and develop a proposed update to Section 3.30 within that 120-day time period that addresses the concerns expressed with our current zoning ordinance 3.30. So we would postpone any action on the amendment as it had been presented. We put a moratorium on enforcement of the current ordinance that's on the books as it regards dogs and cats, keeping the balance of that in place uh, for the next 120 days. And I know there have been a number of volunteers to be on a survey of task force. The reason that I'm recommending six would be, my experience has been, you can't have too many people holding the pencil to generate a draft. And so I'd like to keep the number in the neighborhood of six, certainly not hiding anything once that group has been identified and gets a chance to begin some work, we'll certainly communicate what that group comes up with and not trying to hide anything from anyone. It's just, you can't, in my opinion, draft a meaningful document with everybody trying to hold the pencil. Larry's read a motion. Does anybody I'll want second to second that. that? Steve? Larry has presented a motion. Steve has seconded it. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. I'll just interject. For those of you that said you would like to serve on this task force or have an interest there, please make sure I have some way to contact you, email, phone number, whatever. I'll sit right here and write them down. So, Moving on to finish our agenda, do we have any other business that may come before council at this time? Maybe. Ooh, council discussions and observations? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have? I hand raise it. Maybe. Well, I'm just curious if somebody could look at that tree right across the street from my house. And you, you notice the branches are falling down. The tree is half dead. It's coming down. The next big windstorm we have, it's coming down. And it's over the power lines. It's over the street. The kids ride their bikes over there. We had a big branch come down the other day. There would have been a kid under there. Where is that tree? Um, right in front of the McQueen house. Kind of kitty corner between the fire department and the McQueen house. Okay. We Kevin, could you take a look at that tree tomorrow? Yes, we are aware of a couple of dead trees on the McQueen property okay. right away. Uh, I contacted a tree service today All right. to yeah. address the issue. Um, Thank you. I'm having trouble finding a qualified tree service with the proper equipment to come and take a tree like that down due to the sensitive nature of the, uh, power, lines. the power lines right. and, and the closeness to the roadway. Um, we are working on it and it will be taken care of very soon. I Thank you. Kevin, I can help with that. I have somebody, I have a friend that I graduated with that owns his own tree company yeah. and he has like cranes and he has bucket trucks and stuff like that. Send his information to my email and I'll give him a call tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for raising that concern. We do have a place now for any other public comment at this time. Anyone else who wants to address council? 
Council, is there any other discussion or observation you'd like to raise at this time? I think we have agenda items identified for our next meeting. I believe now at 8.23, we're adjourned.